Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, back to the channel. Right, we are back in the C1, and as you notice, there's a lovely sort of blue cluster. Um, I try and, I mean, I don't know if someone's watched this recent video, this is how it's dried. Uh, but that's not what we're here for. I'm not here for these uh, lovely blue fittings and modifications. Today, we're gonna uh, we're gonna try and fix our hazard light switch because it don't do anything. Yep, not looking. Um, and I don't really want to replace it because that'll cost money. And it's got a nice sort of patina crazed sort of look to it, which I'm quite fond of. Um, so we're gonna take it off. I'm gonna try and actually fix the switch. So let's uh, let's take it off. First thing we've got to do is you get your your trim removal tool. Um, Nice not to scratch anything. And you pull this off. So you pull the knob off. And then there's a screw there. And it's a Phillips, but once again, I've got a flathead. I've got a fat head as well, but I've got a flathead screwdriver. So let's remove this. And then we'll put that in a safe location. And then this lifts up. Yes. Hang on a minute. I'm sure that should just lift up. Let's be more gentle because I don't actually want to break it. Pride enjoy this vehicle. I feel like I'm missing something. Maybe I should watch someone else's YouTube video on how to get this off. Right, I thought I were doing it right, but it just seems to not want to come off as um, as easy as I thought. So I checked I checked on a Dab DIY. I had a look on his video. Um, he also is a. Uh, Likes wasting time and effort messing about with the Citroen C1. So uh, yeah, shout out to Dab DIY. Um, but yeah, we've got to we've got to work this round with our like I said with our trim removal tool, and we've got to lever it off. But this is where it becomes more tricky because I ain't got a tripod. Well, I have, but it's not here. So I'm just gonna do it with a screwdriver. But if you're bothered about your dash and not scratching it, which clearly I am. Um, you want to use a, a proper trim removal tool, really. And then this is supposed to pull out. There we go. There we go, she's going now. Let's get the other side. All left-handed. I'm not left-handed, right, but I'm using my left hand because I'm trying to hold, the, hold this telephonic communications device so you can all see what I'm doing because it's good entertainment, you see. Got my contract with BBC soon. Yeah, so just work it round, pull it out bit by bit, and it does lift off. It's just a bit tight, which is where we like it. Right, I'm gonna put my phone down to have a wrestle with it. Right, she's out now. I need to put my hands on each side of it and give it a good tug. So, there's our radio, which we're leaving alone. And here is the switch, which you can't fucking... Can you see? Right, it's better if I... It sounds like there's coins in there. Find the coins. These are the clips that hold it in, by the way. No, I'll stop fucking about now and I'll get on with it. They sort of just push into them holes and uh, spring loaded plastic jobbies. There's the hazard light switch that I was trying to point at before. Um, we unplugged that. So let's balance it so I can. Uh... Right, there we go. Multitasking. There's a plug. 
which we need to squeeze that. Focus your shitter. Right, so we squeeze that on top and pull that out. There we go. Then to get the switch out itself, there is little grips on it, which, there we go. Right, so this is the switch. This is the switch removed. Oh, there we are. This is the offending article. So I'm going to see if I can actually fix that, if I can pull it apart and fix it, rather than replacing it. Right, so here we have the offending article. And we're going to try and pull it apart. The connections in there, they look okay. Um, they're not all green from a... I mean, these cars, when it rains outside, it sort of rains inside as well. So things do get corroded up. But we're going to try and take that apart. And I think the best way to do it is going to be that pit there. And if there's any in them, and then just slide it apart and then catch all the springs. Well, the front just pulled off, but we've still got to get the actual switch out, which is that. Right, so this is the point where it's probably all going to go wrong. Um, I just stuck a screwdriver down here and just give it a bit of a persuasion to come out. And we can see the contacts that are probably going to be the problem. So I'm going to pull this out and I'll do it while filming it so you can watch me lose all bits. And there's a spring there. And I suspect the issue is something similar. I think it's them that need bending. Let's have a look at how it works. I suspect it's a similar issue to what happens with the uh, indicator starts. I've done another video on repairing one of them, if you're having that problem as well. But let's uh, let's say that's meant to work. Right, so I'm just going to pull that bit out as well. Which... I stuck a screwdriver down there as well. A lot of screwdrivers being stuck into places doing this. I need to lever that out. Oh. Sound like something broke. Alright, so there they connect there are the terminals. And there are where the switch goes against. So that there. Just show it in better quality. I suspect that's our problem. There. So I'm going to clean that up with a bit of wet and dry. Usually I'd say use wire wool, but I haven't got any wire wool. So I'm going to use a bit of wet and dry. Right, so I've given that a bit of a clean up with a bit of a sandpaper. And now, I've also... I'll focus. I've also give them a bit of a clean up, but if you notice that one's bent more than the other, then I'm going to bend the other one to match it, because this is going to be hard to show, I think, but yes. That's the interlock to hold the switch down when you press it, so you don't have to hold it down. That could be working. So that's back in. If you look at the way that this goes into here, which is that way around, and it sort of pushes in there, these, that wants bending. Right. To make better contact. So I'll just do sort of both the same. Right, so there we have it. They are bent now. Let's put it all back together. But this one's putting back in here. Right, so this just lines up into them. Little, can't really show it there. And this side, and then just pushes in. Well, that's how I took it out, so that's how I'm putting it back in. And then when it goes all the way in, them tabs will go in there. Which it's not quite there yet. Right, so the tabs are in, 
I had to push that quite hard to get it in, it sort of snapped into place. See if it's still. That is the, that's the interlock which I was telling you about before. And then now I need to put this in. And I'll put it on this way because that's got springs and shit that's going to fall off. So it goes. You see, there's a hole there for the spring which lines up to that spring. And I'm hoping that when I just push it back together, it'll be fine. Might have bent them contacts too far. Right, as you can see there, the contacts are going on the wrong side. So I'm going to have to, as I push it, I'm going to have to put a screwdriver in just to keep them so that they're going down the side of the, well, where they're meant to go, really. Can't film that. I've not got three hands, so I'll just do it. All right, so can you see the difference there? And then now... Should work. And then bung that back on. Like anyone. Put it back in car. Alright, so I've still got the radio in bits, but we can try this. So we'll just do this now. Yes. Off. On. The light doesn't work inside it though. I'm sure it had a light inside it. Oh well. It's working anyway. Yes. And that just pushes back into the dash, which is what I've done. Yes. Right, so another little bonus. This car, when you put it on cold, I mean, it's coming on to winter now, but in summer when you were putting it on cold, it was still putting a bit of... Uh, Bit of warm air out, and if you look down here in the footwell, this might be the reason why. Now, there's a cable that controls the valve, and when it's all the way, it's not. Let's see if we can focus that. Right, it's not sort of tight. So this cable, which is held in by a clip. Once I take my tighten up a little bit, which I'm going to try and pull that through there if I can. That's so all I've done is released the cable in there and pulled it through. So now, when it's pulled down all the way, it's tight, it doesn't go any further. So, see if that makes any difference, like in about six months' time when it's warm and I want the cold fan on right while i'm here i'm going to take the radio out because it sounds like it's full of pennies and it might be why my cd player doesn't work so i'm going to try and tip them out so to remove the radio we need to remove these clips as well um i'll put, I'll put this at the end of the video um because people are here to see um the switch being replaced not me dicking about with radio so i'll put this section at the end of the video after i've done the switch um, which is when you're watching it, so I don't really need to tell you that. So let's pull all this out, get rid of that, and pull the radio out. Right, so I've unplugged all shit front back of the radio. And then, there's little clips there. I've done one side. And then the other side. Just push them in. Right, and that radio comes out. Right, so we've got our radio out. And I'll try and... See if that's uh, some change inside. Um, hopefully, if we get the change out, like it might be a couple of pennies, then the CD player might start working. But even better than that, we'll have a couple of pennies. All right, so let's uh, see if we can find these pennies. Let's go treasure hunting. First, I want to take the front off, and I've actually got myself, look, hold on, Phillips, Phillips screwdriver. So take them off. You know what, I'm going to take some screws out. I'm just going to take some screws out. I'm not going to film taking some screws out because it's balancing it and dropping it. So I'm just going to do it. Right, so I've took them two screws out and then there's little clips all the way around it, which 
I'm going to have to sort of peel back to pull the front off. Um, I just, I'm just going to do that as well. Right, so that's what happens when you pull the front off, which just plugs in. It's got little plugs there, which just plug into these. So now I need to take more off because I've still not got the pennies out. And now we're in with a chance. Can we see? Nothing. Now right, let's go further. Right, so we're getting further and further, deeper and deeper. And then it says open there. So I'm going to uh, peel them tabs off and I'm going to lift the top off. So you've just got to uh, sort of pull that off. I don't think that's helped us very much. Because anything that's in it is going to be on this side where the CD player is, not on this side. Yep, these have to come out. Right, so I've taken a load more screws out. That comes off, same as the other bit. And let's see, there's a 20p. Oh, we're in the money. Yes. Yeah, there's also, I mean, I, I, I hope you appreciate the order that I'm doing this because I haven't got any instructions. I've not done one before. And I'm just pulling screws out and pulling it off until it comes apart. There we go. I'm trying to film it at the same time. All right. Now let's see if we can retrieve our 20p. All right, so we've got the CD player right now. It would be the furthest thing in there, wouldn't it? You know, taking it all the way apart to get this little thing out. This has all got to go back together as well. Either that or I've got to buy a new one. Um, there's one of the 20p's. I don't know what else is in there, but it sounds like there's more than one. So let's get that out. Let's just flick that out. The offending article. Uh, I think that it was just that 20p that's in it. I don't know if this is going to fix it. The CD player's never worked since I've had the car. Um, I'd say it can't make it any worse, but it sort of already has on it. Right, time for reassembly and see how many of them I've got left afterwards. This slides into here. Well, that's where it comes from, so that's where it's going. Cut an eye jaw, right? This, I need to plug this ribbon back in. So I'll plug the ribbon back in, and that needs putting back on top. So, ribbon plugged back in, and then there is a little tab here that I pulled off, if you remember. Duh. Bend that back. Yes. And then there's all these screws and what have you to put back in. And let's just crack on. So before we put the back back on, we need to put these screws back in without dropping them inside and then back at square minus one. So when you know where this comes apart, it is easier to, to do. Um, that plugs into the knees lining up, but that, that goes on there. Um, that plug goes into the, and then you put some screws in it. It's going to put them two screws, which go in there. Because these ones at the top need to go into that one, which isn't on yet. So I put them in for now so it holds it together. And that's all screws are back in on that bit, which is going to get covered up. And then we need to put our clips back in the way that they come out, which is like that. That's that back on. Next, we can. Uh, Put the front back on. Not that front, that front. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. These two screws here, they weren't putting in because they held the CD player into place. So they weren't putting in before we put that on, which we're going to do now. If you can't see what I'm saying, you can see. There's clips that go around it and then screws that go on it. And then we can put the front back on. But first, I'm going to put all these screws back in. So it's not all tippling over while I'm trying to do it, balancing. So yeah, all these screws now. Should go somewhere around here. Uh, alt screws 
back in there. We've got two left, which are for the front. Now, the very observant among us, if anyone's actually bothered, will probably notice that, or possibly notice, I haven't checked, because I'm, I'm not that bothered. I've just used the screws at the right length, so I've not been too keen on making sure the right screws go in the right holes, as I normally would be, but I don't really care that much about this. Um, but don't be too worried about that. We'll just see if it works or if it goes on fire. All right, so there it is, back together, minus 20p. Hopefully it doesn't need a cord now it's been unplugged. Let's go and find out and let's stick a CD in it and see if it works. So now we've just got to drop the shitter back in. So we'll push it so it's sort of in, into place, but we don't want to snap this down yet. So we'll just push this so it's in here. And then we'll plug it in. Pushes in. I mean, if you need to watch out to plug it in, then uh, probably shouldn't be taking it apart. Saying that, I can't plug it in. <laughs> I'll put it in wrong hole. I'm not even going to edit that out. Don't know what that's for. Maybe that's for a posh one with steering wheel controls or a multi changer or something. We better plug our radio back in because chances are the CD player isn't going to work. Right, so we'll see if the radio works at least. Now the buttons have always been a bit sticky on this, just because of the fine quality. Right, so radio's in, um, fans are blowing, can't turn them off because I haven't put my knob on yet. So let's see if it works. On BBC Radio 2. Yes. Right, so now to put all this back together. Just push it in. And then put our screw back in, which I seem to have lost. There it is. Use our incorrect screwdriver again. Stick our uh, eater knob back on. There we go. All back together. Now let's see if a CD works. I'm so grateful. Moment of truth. Answer. Little things really do. I was getting an error message before, which uh, the suspense not working yet. Yes, it's exactly the same. Fucking mint. So in this video, we've actually successfully fixed the hazard light switch. Now, if anybody knows whether that's when I flash up with the hazard lights, I can't remember if it ever did or not, but it lights up with the side lights. Um, also, we've managed to pull the radio apart to fix the seat, well, to attempt to fix it and made no difference at all. But um, it was worth doing for to see if we could and we've also adjusted the cable on this so that when you put this to the bottom it actually pulls the valve shut on the eater matrix hopefully and doesn't let any water pass and then blows cold air so anyway if you're dumb enough to have stuck with this video for this long then you're probably dumb enough to check out my other videos so if you look on my channel don't forget to have a look um, and there's, there's plenty of other content which is just as awesome as this peace out bro